Okay, we'll look at sampling in base nets now. We're given a base net here with four variables A, B, C, and D. We have the corresponding conditional probability tables for A, for B given A, for C given B, and for D given B. Our first task is to estimate the probability of plus A given minus C and minus D using rejection sampling. Below are some samples that have been produced by prior sampling. That is, the rejection stage in rejection sampling hasn't happened yet. Cross out the samples that would be rejected by rejection sampling. Okay, so our task here is to look at these samples that have been generated by prior sampling and reject the ones that are not consistent with the evidence, and the evidence is minus C minus D. The first one here has plus C plus D, so that's inconsistent. The second one is minus C plus D, that's inconsistent. The third one is plus C minus D, that's inconsistent. The fourth one is minus C minus D, that's consistent. The fifth one has plus C plus D, that's inconsistent. And the sixth one has minus C minus D, that is consistent. Okay, using those samples, what value would you estimate for the probability of plus A given minus C and minus D? Well, that means we look at these two samples, and we look at the empirical count of the occurrence of plus A. That is, plus A has an occurrence of one out of two samples, so the probability of plus A given minus C and minus D is estimated to be one half using rejection sampling with these samples. Okay, now let's move on to likelihood weighting. We're again asked to estimate the probability of plus A given minus C and minus D, and we assume the samples below are generated with likelihood weighting. In likelihood weighting, we sample the variables whenever they are not in the evidence, just as in prior sampling, but when they are in the evidence, in this case, when we're, it's the turn for us to sample C or D, then we force them to be equal to the evidence, in this case, minus C and minus D. Doing so, of course, skews our samples, and to compensate for this skewing in our samples, when we force C and D to be minus C and minus D, we will need to go look up in their tables what the probability was for them to take on these values and reweight the samples accordingly. Let's look at the first one here. The first variable we sample is plus A. A is not one of the evidence variables, so no reweighting needed, equivalently a reweighting by a factor of one. Minus B, not one of the evidence variables, so no reweighting needed, equivalently reweighting by a factor of one. Then when we get to C, we force it to be minus C. So we need to go look up in the table for C what the probability was for it being sampled to be minus C, given that its parent B was minus B. So that's this line over here. That's the reweighting of two fifths. Then when we sample D, we're forcing it to be minus D. So we need to go look up in the table for D what the probability was of getting minus D and the parent B is minus B, so we need to look at this row here, and so that's a reweighting by two-thirds to compensate for the fact that we forced it to be minus D. Moving on to the second sample. When we sample A, A is not part of the evidence, so it's just plain sample without any reweighting. Same for B, not part of the evidence, so the reweighting doesn't, it's just a factor of one. Then we get to C, we force it to be minus C. So again, we look in the table for C. What was the probability of taking on the value minus C? Well, the parent B in this case is plus B, so it's this row over here. So we need to reweight by 4 fifths. And then for the last one, D, again, it's an evidence variable, so we force it to be minus D in this case. We need to go look up in the table for D what the probability was to take on minus D. The parent was plus B, so we're sitting right here in the table, and we multiply with one fourth. Then the last one, the third one here, is identical to the first one, so the reweighting will be exactly the same as for the first one. And we end up with reweightings of 4 15th, 
one fifth and four fifteen. So our samples are now these three samples with a reweighting, and to estimate that probability, probability of plus a given minus c minus d, we'll estimate it. So it's we look at how often plus a occurs, and whenever it occurs, we'll add that weight to the numerator. So we have two times it occurs, and it has twice the weight of 4 fifteenths. And then we divide by the sum of the weights of all the samples, which is 4 fifteenths plus 1 fifth plus 4 fifteenths. And that's our probability of plus a given minus c and minus d according to likelihood weighting, assuming these were the samples generated.